captivity. Now notice, we know two identifying marks then. Whatever that new power is in Revelation 13, verse 11, that second political power, it has to rise up out of an unpopulated area. That's first. Secondly, it has to be rising sometime when the first beast goes into captivity. That's around 1798. So we ask ourselves this question. What power was rising in the world that would become world prominence in the year 1798 out of an unpopulated area. Then we ask the third question, how does this power arise? Notice, then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. What do you notice immediately? The first beast has 10 horns, or there are 10 nations of, e of Europe, that the divisions of the Roman Empire that give it its power. The first beast has crowns on its horns. It's governed by kings. But this new power has no crowns on its horns. Horns are always a symbol of, of power. They're a symbol of strength. Two horns, Republican and Democratic form of government. America rising around 1798 at the exact same time. America coming at the time in an unpopulated area, but there's something else very interesting. It says he has two horns like a what? Lamb. lamb. When you think of a lamb, remember the beasts in Daniel chapter 7? You have the lion, you have the bear, you have the leopard, you have the dragon. What do you know about those beasts? They are old beasts. They are fully mature nations. What do you know about a lamb? A lamb is young. So here's a young nation with two horns of authority, a Republican and Democratic form of a government that comes up out of an unpopulated area of the earth at the same time that the first beast goes into captivity around 1798. What else do you know about a lamb? Maybe your mother said to you one time, you're as free as a lamb. You know, lambs just frisk around and that you're as free as a lamb. The identification of the second beast is very clear. Now notice G. A. Townend, Townsend in his, in his book, The New World Compared to the Old, page 635, almost uses the exact words of prophecy. He says, the mystery of her coming forth. Remember, prophecy said it would come up or come forth. From vacancy, exactly what prophecy said, like a silent seed. You know, it's interesting. The New Testament is written in Greek, and where that coming up is in Greek, it's like growing as a seed. Like a silent seed, we grew into an empire. So even historians use the very language of prophecy to identify the rise of America. In a book called Daniel and the Revelation by Uriah Smith, page 578, he says this, emerging amid the silence of the earth, adding daily to its power and strength. In other words, when America rose, it was destined by God to champion religious liberty. It was destined by God to be the cradle of religious liberty. And from this country, missionaries have gone out around the world to touch the lives of thousands. Would to God we never lost that sense of liberty and freedom in this nation. Amen. Would to God that our lawmakers would always uphold this separation of church and state. You know, I could stop here tonight and we could all go home with a very warm feeling, thanking God that we're here in America. But I think you would expect me to be honest with you, wouldn't yes. you? How many of you want me to be honest with you tonight? The rest of you may be sleeping. All right. Because <laughs> you want me to be honest with you tonight, right? Yes. You don't want me to read half the text, right? Right. So let's take a look. You know, crowns indicate kingly authority. And this power that came up in the United States has no king. Why? Because it is, a, it is a state that is governed by principles of liberty. The absence of crowns indicates freedom. America has always stood for those principles of freedom. But notice what the Bible says. Then I saw another beast, another power, coming up, growing like a seed, out of the earth, an unpopulated area. He has two horns. Freedom manifest in democracy and republicanism, like a lamb, a new nation. But he would speak like a what? Dragon. 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 Here is a warning. 
How could that ever happen in the United States of America? Once we lose a sense of our heritage, once we lose a sense of who we are, then we stand at the very risk of these prophecies being fulfilled. Now, how does any nation speak? Remember, it says he would speak as a dragon. How does any nation speak? It speaks through its legislative bodies. It speaks through its laws. Well, how could laws ever be passed in America to restrict religious liberty? The Bible tells that story throughout the book of Revelation. Notice what it says. He, the second beast of America, exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, namely the papacy. It goes on. And causes the earth and those who dwell in it. So here's something universal. America is a universal world leader. And here's what the Bible predicts. I'll tell you straight out, and then we will, uh, we will then show it from the Bible. Here's what the Bible predicts. That in America, there will be an economic crisis, a political crisis, a social crisis, and uh, natural disasters. We'll show that from the Bible. In an attempt to bring the country back together, laws will be passed that will erode the wall of church and state. And a common day of worship will attempt to bring America and the world together. We'll show you this in Bible prophecy. I'll show it to you in Catholic literature. I'll show it to you in Protestant literature. And I'll show you some Supreme Court decisions that will make your eyebrows stand. And then we'll apply this to our individual heart. Notice he causes all, causes the earth, and those who dwell in it and worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So the deadly wound of the first beast, the Pope goes into captivity 1798. <coughs> His deadly wound would be healed. He would come out of captivity. If you read the literature around 1798, what that literature is saying is simply this, that the papacy is dead, but yet the papacy comes back to worldwide prominence. The, papist, the pope today is recognized as the leading religious figure in the world by many nations. And uh, the Bible predicts that what happened in the Middle Ages, surprisingly enough, a union of church and state, will happen at a time of amazing crisis again today. Now notice how this is going to happen. Revelation 13 helps us to know, at this time of crisis, he, that is the devil, will perform great signs, that signs are miracles, so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. You know, some people say, what's fire? Is it nuclear war? You can't read backwards into the Bible. You have to let the Bible explain itself. So what is fire a symbol of in the Bible? Well, fire is always a symbol of God's presence. You look into the ancient sanctuary, and between the two, the two cherubims, there is the fire of God's presence. You look, for example, at the pillar of fire that guided Israel by night in the wilderness, God's presence. You look at Elijah, who calls down fire from heaven, God's presence in the midst of paganism. You will get tongues of fire, the presence of God manifest by the Holy Spirit. So what does our text say? Let's go back a slide. We'll go backwards once. It says, he would perform great signs, that's the devil, performing great miracles, so he makes fire come down from heaven. In other words, the false manifestation of the presence of God in a false religious movement at a time of crisis.